on here we met again with Sarnia Agarwal, who is a co-developer of Cosmos and Tendermint, and he, he is as well co-founder of uh, Osmosis, a MEM exchange on Cosmos. Uh, great to have you here, Sarnia. Thanks for having me back on again. So, like, uh, can you explain to people what uh, Osmosis is to those ones who don't know yet? Yeah, so Osmosis is a DEX app chain. So what it means is it's, it's, it's a decentralized exchange similar to Uniswap or uh, Serum, or whatever you might be familiar with. But unlike these other pl uh, DEXs, which they are built on an existing blockchain like Ethereum or Solana or something, this is, we have our own blockchain for our DEX. So <clears throat> unlike other DEXs, they can you know, only control their smart contract and the front end. We control the smart contracts, the front end, but we control the blockchain itself. And that gives us a lot more sort of ability to do interesting features and UX that other uh, DEXs just won't be able to do. And now you as well expanding to other chains. Just yesterday's news that you uh, integrating as well Polkadot. We have mm -hmm. partnership with Axela and mm -hmm. Beam. Can you tell more about that? Yeah. So you know we use a protocol called IBC for our cross chain communication, mm -hmm. um, and that works really well for connecting to all the IBC enabled chains. And more and more chains are becoming IBC enabled, but in order to connect to these other chains that are not IBC enabled yet, like Polkadot. Uh, we use Axlar, which is a bridge provider. And so we had this like sort of process of selecting the bridge. We selected between like four different options and we realized Axlar just had the best product. And so we've been working with them to, you know, Moonbeam is one of the biggest parachains on Polkadot. On, on Polkadot. And so by using Axlar, we're able to like bring over assets from Moonbeam and then just throughout the Polkadot ecosystem. So hopefully with it, basically within the next day or so, you're going to see like, dot and stuff like listed on osmosis as well so essentially you know we're, we're, osmosis is you know we came from the cosmos ecosystem mm -hmm. but our goal is not to be the cosmos decks our goal is to be the interchain decks and that means we have to you know bring in assets from everywhere and so if you look today actually already um you know eth usdc wbtc are three of the five biggest assets on osmosis so you know, we're, we're slowly going to be bringing in more and more of these other ecosystem assets too. And why did you decide to integrate Polkadot first? Um, they were just one of the first ones that were like, you know, excited. The Moonbeam team was really excited mm -hmm. to get this going. And, you know, I guess Cosmos and Polkadot have had like a long history together. And, yeah. you know, uh, and it's cool to like bring them together and be like, hey, look, I think, I, I think the Polkadot ecosystem has a lot of like assets, but like the DeFi ecosystem there isn't as developed as it is in Cosmos as well as in just other ecosystems. And so that was like an opportunity to like, hey, can we become like the biggest DEX for a DOT? Mm -hmm. um, because, because there aren't just that many DEXs right now for Polkadot yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, last month in June, uh, uh, Smosis uh, uh, was exploited and five million were stolen. So how did you cope uh, with uh, this hack and mm -hmm. uh, what security measures have you taken? Yeah, we've done a lot of work on just like sort of revamping our security processes, like just much better test coverage, documentation. Uh, we, we had a tool that we used to use called the simulator, which allowed us to like, it was a tool that would like send random transactions against the a test net and like figure out how to like break the thing and so we we stopped using that like a few months ago and so we decided to like okay uh revamp that and bring that make that usable again um and then you know with the actual hack itself you know we have we're, we're, we're refunding all the users who were who were affected by it so uh, a lot of the attackers have actually returned most of the money mm -hmm. so we're using that and then whatever wasn't returned the osos uh, dev team is like covering the shortfall there and what are your views on current uh, markets and uh, how generally DeFi markets uh, has developed since one year and AMMs too? Yeah, so, I mean, Osmosis itself has had a quite a spectacular rise and then fall, I guess, uh, over the last year. Um, you know, we've become sort of the center decks in the Cosmos ecosystem. Now we're expanding. Um, one of the things is we were like hit pretty heavily with the Terra crash because um, we were actually the biggest DEX for uh, UST. Uh, so we had on Osmosis, like almost like half of the liquidity was between UST and Luna together. Mm -hmm. And so once those crashed, it was a common exit route for people to sell their 
UST and Luna into Osmo and then Osmo into uh, you know dollars. And so that because of that, that as those crash, it had a big sort of negative price impact on Osmo. But you know we're working on like you know now we're diversifying to more than just you know part of that was we were just too focused on Cosmos specifically and. UST and Luna were two of the biggest assets, but as we go into more ecosystems, we'll be a little bit more diversified. Um, and you know, just in markets in general, I think uh, it's kind of I'm, I'm I'm kind of excited about the bear market a little bit. It gives time to like build things. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of like features that we like, you know, our threshold encryption stuff for like anti front running. These are things that we know are like six month long development pro things. And then during the bull market. We kind of just like kept prioritizing the you know faster two two month wins and just getting things shipped faster. But during the bear market, it gives us time to like you know work on some of these like longer but more important features. And for how long will bear market uh, last in your mind? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, historically two to three years, but it's also like a weird time where like you know crypto has only existed for the last ten years, um, and you know. Crypto has had its own little two or three year cycles, but in that entire time, we've been in one global ma macro like bull market, basically. And this is the first time that crypto's bear market is correlated with a global macro bear market. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, it's a little bit of uncharted territory. So, I don't know. We're, we're, I'm hoping it, things will be the same as it has been in the past, but you never know. Just, it's, it's a very different situation. And are any other exciting projects for you in Cosmos ecosystem or in other um, chains currently for you? Yeah, so there's a lot of like cool stuff coming in into Cosmos, especially onto Osmosis now. So um, after the whole Terra crash, a lot of the, so we also have a smart contracting system now called Cosmosm, which is the same one that like Terra had. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the projects from the Terra from Terra are like looking for a new home, and a lot of them chose to use. Osmosis. So we're going to see a lot of cool things being deployed on Osmosis pretty soon. Some of the stuff I'm, you know, one of the ones I'm most excited about is the Mars protocol. They're like a lending uh, protocol that I think is one of the coolest lending protocol designs, much you know more powerful than I think than some of the current existing ones. Um, but we're also going to see things like you know uh, vault systems, ETFs, uh, you know, trading strategy protocol. So we're, we're going to all the thing. You know, I, the goal of Osmosis is. Today, it's very much just like your spot trading, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go on your centralized exchange, you go on Binance, you go on FTX, a centralized exchange has like a bunch of things as part of it, right? They have spot trading, but they also have margin and perps and fiat on ramps, um, you know, a launch pad, sometimes they have NFT market. So I, I feel like a Osmosis as a DEX needs to incorporate all of those functionalities mm -hmm. that the centralized exchanes do today. And you launched as well an NFT builder and got into NFTs. Can you tell more about that? <laughs> yeah, so this is just like a little side project that we started just for fun. But, you know, we got really interested in it was we just had this like, idea of like, you know, everyone else seems to, well, you know, if you go on Las Vegas website, we have all this artwork and stuff. That's always been important to us. And obviously with all that artwork, everyone was always asked us, oh, when NFTs, when NFTs. And so we were just thinking about like, okay, how would we want to do NFTs? Mm -hmm. um, we were not interested in doing the like, you know, 10,000 issue NFT, that's it, right? Because, you know, Osmosis has like a few, like 100,000 daily active users. And so like having 10,000 NFTs is like, you know, okay, great. We get to like engage 10% of our community. That doesn't seem right. So we wanted to figure out how do we make it so we can engage, make this more of a community building tool. Our goal is not to build the, you know, the scarcity mindset for like high value NFTs. It's, it's a community tool. So how do we get everyone involved? And so we realized, hey, look, video games have been doing this for like ever, right? Where it's like, why don't we give it so you can have the base NFT for free and then the accessories are all also NFTs and you attach the accessory NFT to the base NFT and it changes the base NFT. So you can then, you know, and then all these accessories, we're gonna distribute them through different means. Some of them you can buy, but some of them you're only gonna get as like, achievement so like you know maybe once you lp in three pools or if you're a top trader you're going to get certain types of accessories or so yeah there's different like methods there that we're going to do to like distribute these and have them act as like achievement badges mm -hmm. yeah that's a cool idea and as well what's your opinion on uh, modular blockchains it seems like to be quite a trendy thing yeah um so 
I am not, I don't know, I guess I'm not like super, I, I, our approach is, has been very much around vertical integration mm -hmm. where, um, like I said, the benefit for us is we control the contracts, the, the front end, the chain, and we also actually maintain our own wallet as well called mm -hmm. Kepler. So it's like we have this like full stack from wallet all the way to chain. And I think that the ability to like, you know, if we want to make some like big change to how things work, let's say an example. Um, we one thing we do in Osmosis is we allow you to pay transaction fees in any token you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to pay in Osmo. But to do that, we have to go change the chain to be able to do that. But we also have to go change the wallet to be able to support that as well. And so it's by having this like full stack control that we're able to do those sort of changes. And I think but with the modular blockchains, like you know, giving up certain important ver pieces of your blockchain to like someone else to do, get, might, you might end up losing some of that control. Mm -hmm. And can you share some more plans for the development of Osmosis? Yeah, so right now the big focus, um, you know, is you know developing that ecosystem helping some of these new projects come in like mm -hmm. leverage and stuff but then from the core side we're definitely moving towards like order book style system so mm -hmm. to today we've had a very passive amms um which are you know amms are really good for bootstrapping the ecosystem uh which i think we've done in the last one year i think the causes ecosystem has been bootstrapped now but in order especially when we go into these like bigger assets like eth and dot and stuff we need better concentrated liquidity to make our pricing competitive. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing order books. Or it's actually going to be, technically, it's going to be more like Uniswap V3, uh, concentrated liquidity, but we're making it feel like an order book. So it's going to be somewhere in between order books and Uniswap mm -hmm. V3. So that's kind of one of the big things we're moving towards right now. Okay, so waiting for your new version of Osmosis. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.